doesn't have ruin the company to get bonuses. I don't know whether it's true that there really was a contractual obligation to pay them or whether that's just an excuse. Why are they being rewarded for ruining the company? The economy. We didn't draft these contracts. We've got a lot on our plate, but it is appropriate when you're in charge to make sure that stuff doesn't happen like this. So for everybody in Washington who's busy scrambling trying to figure out how to blame somebody else, just go ahead and talk to me. Well, there's no doubt that this issue was brought out the pitchfork-wielding pitch peasant side of American public opinion, and this in a country where the rich are normally admired. Angry and outraged, and at the same time, I think really cautious about where the focus is, because when you look at the bonuses that have been paid, it's really less than 1% of all the money that's gone to AIG. So I'm Talk to me. Well, there's no doubt that this issue was brought out. If you look at the bonuses that have been paid, it's really less than 1% of all the money that's gone to AIG. You are the rich and normally admired. You help the economy. And do you get why they're getting a bonus when they've... It's a disgrace for the people who ruin the company to get bonuses. I don't know whether it's true that there really was a contractual obligation to pay them or whether that's just an excuse. Why are they being rewarded for ruining the company? Uh, that's the question. Do you the time? And do you get what? Like a lot of other Americans to know, it is the peasant side of American public opinion, and this in a country where the rich are normally admired. Angry and outraged, and at the same time, I think really cautious about where the focus is, because when you look at the bonuses that have been paid, it's really less than one percent of all the money that's gone to AIG. So I just really like opinion. And this in a country where the rich are normally admired. We really like, I think like a lot of other Americans to know what's happened to the other 99% of them. I'm cautious about where the focus is because when you look at the bonuses that have been paid, it's really less than 1% of all the money that's gone to AIG. So I just really like, I think like a lot of other Americans to know what's happened to the other 99% of the money as well. I think you ought to be locked up or charged or something. That's Stephen. And one of them wasn't giving to them for bonuses, it was giving to them to bail them out, to help the economy. And do you get why they're getting a bonus when they've just lost $180 billion of your tax money? No, I don't understand it at all. It's just greed. I'm lucky they have a job, but I'm still angry because of other people that don't have jobs. It's a disgrace for the people who ruined the company to get bonuses. I don't know whether it's true that there really was a contractual obligation to pay them or whether that's just an excuse. Why are they being rewarded for ruining the company? That, that's the question. So why, with all that's gone wrong in the last year in America, has this issue in particular made Americans so angry? Question for Larry Sabato, Professor of Politics at the University of Virginia. So much of this financial meltdown has been incomprehensible to average people. But everybody can understand a failed corporation giving out tens of millions of dollars to people who literally made it go bankrupt and had to rely on all that taxpayer money. Americans instinctively knew that AIG stood for arrogance, incompetence, and greed. And they reacted accordingly. I mean, they flooded the media with emails and calls. They flooded the House and secretly made it go bankrupt and had to rely on all that taxpayer money. Americans instinctively knew that AIG stood for arrogance, incompetence, and greed. To go bankrupt and had to rely on all that. The House and Senate with emails and millions of dollars to people who literally made it go bankrupt and had to rely on all that taxpayer money. Americans instinctively knew that AIG stood for arrogance, incompetence, and greed. And they reacted accordingly. I mean, they flooded the media with emails and calls. They flooded the House and Senate with emails and calls. So often, what happens in Washington is kabuki theater, and it's really generated top-down. This was bottom-up. And those senators, those members of Congress, they have bungled this issue as well, haven't they? Because, I mean, they essentially wrote the legislation that made it possible to pay these bonuses. And they clearly didn't see the issue then, and nor did Obama when he signed that legislation into law. That's absolutely the case. Look, um, if this happened on Obama's watch, he's responsible. This happened with 
this current Congress as well as the past Congress, and remember the leadership is the same, they're responsible. And frankly, I think it's killed the entire bailout program. There will be no more bailouts passed by Congress. If the administration needs to find money, it'll have to find it for money already appropriated or ask the Federal Reserve to print money. Larry Sabato. And an interesting postscript to all this, by the way, Carolyn. We're just beginning to get word that some of those bonuses are being paid back. Maybe populism works. Well, you never know. And maybe the example might be followed here. Kevin Connolly reporting from Washington. Thanks very much. 22 minutes past five now and the first signs of spring. Through the vacuum that the war left behind was filled. How, how does love come into this? Oh, I think that's stopped now. That's, <laughs> there is a bit of that. I mean, this is about my first love, really, which is love of pop music, which has always been right from when I was the tiniest boy through to now, uh, the single thing in life that most sort of inspires and delights me. Um, and uh, so this is about, and it's also a film about friendship, which I think both four weddings and not in your world as well. Really. I think you've said once that you... Yes, and most of my friends Africa. do. So apparently 83% of Africans see this is what they today. And we just decided that they should be there, that there should be some without interfering with the sort of energy and kick and joy of the originals that it would be a shame not to be able to paint in those different colours and I think that you're doing an adaptation you're allowed to while keeping it basically stupid. I mean, it's funny because I always say that this is, in a way, a compensation for some of the images on, let's say, comic relief, some, and certainly on all news reports of the negative side of Africa, that we try to say the, the Africa that actually you experience when you go there, which is of people who are often, apparently 83% of Africans think they're happy, whereas 56% of people in the UK do. So it's part of, you know, crazy, that's how it goes today, and we just decided that they should be there, that there should be some without interfering with the sort of energy and kick and joy of the originals, that it would be a shame not to be able to paint in those different colours, and I think we're doing an adaptation you're allowed to, while keeping it basically super. Well, it's funny because I always say that this is, in a way, a compensation for some of the images on, let's say, comic relief, some, and certainly all news reports of the negative side of Africa, that we try to say that the Africa that actually you experience in the which is of people who are often, apparently 82% of Africans think they're happy, whereas 56% of people in the UK do. So it's uh, chief, some, and certainly on all news reports of the negative side of Africa, that we try to say the, the Africa that actually you experience when you go there, which is of people who are often, apparently 82% of Africans think they're happy with 56% of people in the UK. So it's, uh, it's a necessary counterbalance, I think. So in a way, comic relief and this brought those two interests together for you, didn't Yeah, they, 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 they do, and I think one, you know, I think The Latest Detective is a necessary counterbalance to some of the sorrow that we show on the on the nose. Now let's talk about your film, The Boat That Rocked. Um, you have said in the past that your films are always about the world.